Go ahead and get started here. Um, I want to just introduce um, th this episode of the of, of the SPC Journey series. Um, we kicked this off last summer with the awesome uh, safe fellow Harry Konerman, um, really kind of talking about you're an SPC now what, right? And over the course of uh, over the course of the last seven eight months, it's evolved from being kind of this webinar where there's a PowerPoint deck and stuff like that to more of just kind of a talk show. And the idea here is to highlight real SPCs on different points in their journey who've done some amazing things. Right. Last month, we had Elena, Elena Keck from Vodafone talking about this leading a lace of the scale where they have their own agile release train. Right. This month, we've got Takesha Murphy and, 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 um, and JC Titus. Uh, Takesha, she is, she's a, a get stuff done kind of person. Um, she's she's an, one of two SPCs at Ingenico. There's a series of companies in, in North America. And uh, JC and Takesha will share how they turned those separate companies into a single community um, as, as, as we get into our, our, our show today. Um, she's a senior Agile delivery manager. She has experience with both LPM, Agile coaching. She lives in the greater, uh, greater Atlanta area. Uh, she's passionate and kind. I will tell you personally that um, uh, I, I just, I've seen her heart. And so I just, I, I'm a big fan of Takesha. Uh, JC is the other side of that coin, not that he's not kind and awesome, but the together, the two of them have done just amazing stuff, right? The partnership there. For me personally, there's individuals like Mike Robertson that I've worked with where they they fulfill things that I'm not good at, right? And I've watched as the two of them who started their journey together, um, I think they they took an implementing safe class in March of, of 2021. And, um, and from there, they've done some amazing stuff. JC heads software delivery for banks and acquirers within the entire North American branch of Ingenico. The company's headquartered in France. And so I know JC has been popping back and forth across the pond. I think he just shared, he, he taught his first, um, his first uh, leading safe class um, in French. Thank you, Etienne, for, uh, and others who worked on that. Um, you know, th those, those translations came from the help of the community. And this webinar is designed to be focused on the community. And I encourage all of you, regardless if you're an SPC on some point in your journey, you could be an SPC to you or a SAFE fellow, or you're somebody inside a company who's curious about SAFE, curious about the role of the SPC and what it can bring to your enterprise. Because typically, well, at least what I believe personally is that you can't have sustainable success, profitable success with SAFE without internal change agents who can sustain and grow your implementation. If you're relying on consultants to come in and do it all for you, what happens when they leave? And so this is all about the power of, 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 of change agents. And with that said, um, today we're gonna talk about a couple different things, creating this virtual organization across two continents and four time zones. We'll talk about moving the focus from teams to a team. And Agile Release Train is a team, it's, it's a community, right? We'll talk about a theme. What's the, have any of you ever used a theme for your Agile Release Train? There's some powerful stuff you can get in that, and, and JC and Takesha will take us through that. We'll talk about making P remote PI planning awesome. Some people, now that people are getting back into the offices, some companies have found, you know what? It's better to do fully remote than partially in person. I personally strongly believe in that as well. And you'll get some tips and tricks on how to do this really, really well remotely. Uh, and finally, kind of that mindset and collaboration that strengthens your community. All right, with that said, um, I'm just going to ask JC or Takesha, one of you want to tell us a little bit about this, this organization you've created in the community at Ingenico North America? Well, the best to do that is definitely Takesha. So I, I definitely will get into it. Um, we have a, a virtual team um, and we know it can be complex, right? Because we're over two continents, um, over four time zones, but it is possible. And we've learned this through our planning and how we execute with our team. Uh, just a few points uh, I want to share. One is clearly defining the goals and the objectives, right? We found that this is really important for our teams to understand their role in the art, right? And um, we make sure that we have um, established communication channels with our teams. Um, and because we're in different uh, countries to do this, um, and we started this over the pandemic, right? So we're an actual, um, an art that was established on Zoom, right? Remote, um, not in person. So with our uh, teams, with our communication as leaders, 
Um, we found it very important for us first to start turning on our cameras, right, to encourage our team. Um, we're not into trying to mandate with the teams. So basically we allow them to do the agreement, but we really want them to understand that the communication um, is very important. Um, also because of the cultures. Um, so one thing we led up was um, a, a learning class, we'll call it Lingenico, right? So the three main languages, French, English, and Spanish, um, we actually created that in our environment so that you can learn the culture, so that you can learn the language. Um, and I think a, a key part of this, the instructors were within the team, so they volunteered, right? So they start having the growth mindset and they could actually uh, compare and um, really communicate with their peers, right? And with us, right? So we found uh, that that was a uh, key for us. Also in situations where um, conflict, right? It helps us. We don't ignore conflict. Um, we understand that the first thing is to acknowledge it. And as you go through your transformation, um, it's very important for an SPC to really listen to all the team members. But at the end of it, we have an agreement that we can disagree, but we will agree to make a decision, right? So JC, you wanna add some points there? Yeah, I, I think you're, these are all great points. Uh, I, I would really start with every crisis, every obstacle is a fantastic opportunity. And I'm going to say now looking back with insights that we were lucky to embark on this journey for safe in the middle of the pandemic. I mean, really, we we were using Scrum and agile methodologies here and there uh, for a few years, uh, and it was working pretty well to some extent. And early 2021, we decided to start looking for okay, what is the next step? What is the next stage? What other tools could we put in place to help us move forward? And pretty much all of us between uh, US, Canada, Mexico, and our, our key partner in Tunisia, we're all stuck working from home. It's really smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. So we reached out to Phil and Phil was saying, well, we, we're just really moving into it. And now we're doing virtual classes and we're just like, perfect, because we need to train over almost 200 people from developers to sales, to what we call solutions slash product people, our key management leadership, we got great support there from uh, our C uh, CTO in North America, our fan last year. And that's, that's how we started. And it was a fantastic opportunity because it forced us to look into what can we do? What tools can, can we use? What adaptation changes must we do? Uh, we've all seen the great save videos. We would love to be able to rent a room and put the 130, 140 people we have but we are so far away uh, that it's not possible. So we found this right balance, I believe, where now uh, we had to spread the PI planning events. We have to uh, work around time zones uh, because we're all on different time zones. How do we make this work? How do we make this virtual environment really become a, a unified team, a unified working environment? Uh, and that's been working so great for us uh, and I'm not going to say it's because of safe. I'm going to say it's because of the way we communicated, the way we, we started. And that's how we started with Phil, where we were just invited to join us. Let's have a discussion, just like we're having today. Uh, let's open up and let people uh, decide their preferences. Some people like to be on camera, some people don't. Uh, one thing we found is People don't like to be on camera in front of hundreds of other people. But when you get into your breakout rooms and it's 10 or 12, it's your team. Yeah, you know what? You're comfortable turning on your camera. And that, that's a good incentive for people to uh, to get working on that. I want to take a moment just to, for our audience to frame up what was in front of you, the problem the two of you were trying to solve, right? From my perspective, it was you had three separate companies that had some similarities across their product lines. Maybe you can tell a little bit about what Ingenico does. And they were used to having, you know, the, the person who led Mexico had his developers in Mexico and he called the shots for Mexico. Then we call the shots for the US. We call the shots for Canada. 
And we're talking about working at organizing around value where you're looking at a solution for North America. Tell me a little bit more about that, that part of your journey as you start to frame up kind of where you came from. Well, I think one of the parts for us um, that focused from teams to team, right, was identifying the art itself. And so we did some value um, string mapping, and then we actually found out how that we could prioritize all three countries together, right, and really have that business strategy where we can bring the most value for Ingenico. Um, and really, it helps us by having these self-organizing teams on the art. Um, it, it's really key because it's the teams who are delivering to the customer, right? We can always guide them. Um, definitely, we roll up our uh, sleeves and work right with them, not just there as leaders, but really their input and in, um, helping how to organize, help letting them make decisions, breaking down silos, right? Instead of having three countries, right? Um, so one thing JC did within the organization, he streamlined, right? So that we can understand we're all working together as one. Um, so that really helped us. And then also by make, letting us make decisions, right? There's a um, manager structure, but really on the train, that's set aside, right? It's the teams who make the decisions and we empower them. And if they need help, we're definitely there to guide them and to collaborate. But really, we, I could see that the art itself helps us guide our train um, into the future. I want to okay. just thank you, Sakisha. I want to, we got a question from the audience. And by the way, you can throw your questions in. Um, we will have time for Q&A at the end. But if it's, if it's, on, if it's on the theme where we're on, on the flow, we'll definitely answer it live. So what are the challenges and any kind of learning you can share in the agile transformation that you faced, right? So from where you were, I think it was what, you know, you're, you you launched your art July of 21, if I recall correctly, right? Yes. As you were preparing for that and where you are now, what what were a couple of the challenges you faced or some of the insights you have? Maybe the, the top one from each of you. Top one? Oh, that's easy. It's always the same. I think it's the same for everybody. Budget. People don't want to spend the money. You're going to spend money. You need to find a few hundred thousand dollars, not just in investment for support for uh, training, but also in time, because think of it this way. You have four days for 200 people taken away from the company. That's that's a massive amount of cost. So step number one is really convincing the management team, your executives, that it's an investment that's worth it, and they will see a return on it. For us, it was somewhat easier because like Takisha explained, so we do we write payment software that sits on uh, credit and debit card machines in US, Canada, and Mexico. All three countries were working separately, creating duplication in a sense. And so the argument we made was by unifying these teams, working on the same model, working on the same framework, we'll be able to share 70% of the work together by creating a single application, and that will generate savings. So that was the argument. Uh, then we had to identify where the value chain is and how we actually extract this value for the customer. And remember, we're talking agile, so the customer is really the people we work for, the executive teams, uh, not just our direct clients. And so how do we satisfy our main customer, the management team, the, uh, our board of directors for North America? And that's what we presented. And that was, that was the first biggest obstacle we had to, to overcome. Second one, was I, I, I believe you over, you overcame it, right? I, I, you mentioned, I think you mentioned previously that you've got you've got other parts of Ingenico Global that are thinking about, hey, can we do this in France? Can we do this in in in, um, in Italy? Can we do this in Australia? So it's yeah. pretty exciting stuff. Um, Takesha, what's what's your one thing? I would think the changing from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset, right? It's especially when uh, the process that was in place is making money, right? At, at the end of the day, that can be hard, right? For the teams that we need to switch to this model. Um, so definitely um, as an SPC, it's more than just being certified, right? It's continuous uh, reassurance. Um, it's continuous pivoting. Uh, Sometimes you may see a decision and you have to pivot and go a different way, right? So definitely, 
for an SPC having that growth mindset because you're supporting not just your teams, you are supporting the organization in this transformation. Great point. I, I want to just throw one thing in there, just to some context here, right? So um, I had the honor of joining, and, and some of some of my peers, the team I work with, we had the honor of joining JC and Takesha on their journey. However, I want to point out something. Um, we This was not a, hey, you need five of us full-time for five years in order to be successful with SAFE, right? JC mentions training. He brought us in to help them get started with, hey, how do you do these classes, right? He brought us in to help them a little bit with their art launch. And we've kind of been a phone a friend to them. Can you tell any advice you might have, either of you, on kind of for somebody out there, an internal change agent, you know, it's not, I, I don't think it's binary as in the consultant does it all or you do it all. There's a, there's a, what are your thoughts on kind of any advice to people out there that are either trying to sell their services as a consultant or companies who are thinking about, hey, I may need a consultant on, on what's that right balance and how did it, how did you figure out what worked for you? Hmm, that's, that's a challenging one. Uh, and I, I think it jives with one of the questions from Mike is how do you treat a diverse team? So if you look at our team, um, we're, we're a team of developers and QA people. I would say, I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but close to half of us are, are women, I'm including myself in them, but uh, half of the team is women. So it's already very uh, open. Uh, and I would say there's a lot of minorities. And when we work with consultants or when we work with anybody, uh, you're pretty much next day, you're part of the team. We, we are uh, employees and we work a lot with the team in Tunisia entirely subcontractors. We don't consider them as subcontractors. We consider them as part of the family. And I think that's a key element. So when you joined, uh, when Mike joined, uh, and uh, we just included you as part of the family. So I'm pretty sure uh, you received some back We felt, we felt that way. And stickers <laughs> from Takisha, and we'll get back to it. But yeah, you're, you're just part of the family. You, you, you you're part of the team. And I think that's key when you're hiring a consultant for Agile. It's, it's, it's more than consulting. It's somebody that, who's going to be there to guide you, to support you, to be with you along your journey. So don't treat this as a business relationship. It's more really a partnership. And, and that's key there. Don't, don't start thinking, oh, I'm going to hire a consultant and magically in six months, I'm going to be ready. It's going to be a longer journey than that. It's going to be a lot less expensive than you think because you will be engaging when you need and sharing more uh, information than you would expect. I love the fact that Amazing. you said your journey, because that's just a side note here. It was not our journey. This was in Jenico's journey. This is Takesha's journey and JC's journey. And that's an important thing to keep in mind as an SPC, in my opinion. Takesha, please continue. <laughs> And maybe just to add, so one point when, when you're selecting a consultant, it's, it's very important that the consultant is very well-rounded, right? So especially with the applied framework team, uh, there were different obstacles for us, right? And so uh, presenting these obstacles to you, you could uh, tactically set up the right communication, right? Sometimes the communication came through us. Sometimes you were invited and you were steering the conversation, right, to help just from the experience that you have had with other companies, right, that in this framework, it's, it's more than just the book, right? The, the experience really helps you. Um, so if you're looking for a consultant, you have to consider that in the applied framework team, your whole team there, um, definitely, as JC said, is a partner to us. Um, and we consider everyone on your team a family. So, and our team does too, right? They will reach out and, and speak to your team when they need help, mentoring, um, good relationship for us. Thank you, Takesha. I, I, you know, and that, that's, that's not a, that's, I don't want you to think that's about applied frameworks. That's about partners out there, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, our team's not the only one that's out there. And also you may not be able to bring in a partner, right? Well, and I want to get to Lim's question in just a second. But there's a community out there as well. 
you you know don't be afraid to ask for help other places you'd be surprised at you know at how many you know slack communities and forums are out there where you might be able to ask a question that that for you is everything and for them it's five minutes of their time right I, I wish I could say I can do those as much as I used to five, six years ago, but I still try and make time for that. And so just just understand that you're not alone out there, whether it be watching a webinar like this one or 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 having a partner. Um, JC, there's a question in chat. Do you have yes. to go down? Oh, go ahead. I, I saw it, but I, I want to add one thing about the learnings. And that's a big one, because when we go through the implementation, we say, oh, identify the roles and who could be a great Scrum Master, who could be a great RTE, uh, PO, PMs, et cetera. The one thing that's not in the guide, that is a must, and we did with Phil, is from day one, when you start, identify your supporters and your detractors. You will always have detractors. You will always have supporters. And work very closely with your detractors. Your supporters, they are going to be easy, but your detractors, you need to work with them more and your goal should be to transform these detractors into supporters so magical when it happens exactly and, uh, and they'll tell you what it, they'll usually tell you what it would take absolutely you know, yeah mm -hmm. um so on, on the the financial did you know there's just a question did you have to go down to financial modeling to convince your leadership to to invest so i'm on the product side so i didn't go into the financial details of the model uh Two reasons behind it. One, uh, my boss was great and basically gave me carte blanche and said, you're here to do this implementation and move the, ta the team to, towards Agile. So do what you have to do. Uh, I still went through the exercise of building a table showing, okay, this is what we do in US, Canada, and Mexico. This is what's overlapping. These are the benefits we're going to gain by unifying the teams. Uh, I didn't have to go through the details of the costs. Uh, there are other elements, other pulleys to, uh, that were pulled you know, in terms of team management, uh, resource management, uh, investments in uh, test equipments, things like that. Uh, I went into that, but no, I didn't go into the details of the financial model. It, it was pretty much explicit from day one. And I understand it may not be the case for everyone, and you may have to go into some more details. Uh, and in that case, don't hesitate. Go out to the salespeople, tell them, hey, this is what I'm planning. Do, do you think you can help me out? Can, can, you, can I count on you to say, that's a good idea when I present it? And, and that's where you need to find your supporters. Hey, I, was, I was looking at this background you have. That's not a, that, that's your real background. That's not a, yeah. uh, so it says, are you just a, a really, that doesn't say Jurassic Park, that says Ingenico Park. So uh, one of our one of our things I want I think that is just flat out amazing. I got to tell you, I, I tell your story all the time. I don't always mention your company name after this webinar. I will because it's public, but um, it's just pretty awesome what you've done as far as picking a theme uh, and, and making it stick. So I mean, I, you mentioned earlier, right, that, that we're like family, and I remember, um, you know, I've we've got we've got not only planning poker decks, but also you know, really useful stuff for remote, like, you know, anybody ever seen uh, thought this while they're on on the on on a video conference, right? Or this one, you know, can we take this offline? You know, got to go. Oh, and my personal, well, I would say Mike's Mike and Travis's personal favorite, you know, to use on me, get to the point. Um, so tell us a little about about this 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 Jurassic train that you've got. Absolutely. So I think when we started the art and it had the this a train, how do we connect the team to the train? Just to give you a little background, the, the name of the train is uh, the theme was back to the train off of the movie Back to the Future. Yeah. To everyone who yes, the first one, right? So you'll see it here. And so we created lanyards, right? And so in that movie, when you go back, right, you go back in time to different places. And so one of the places when we had our one year anniversary in July, we ended up at Jurassic Park, right? So at any point in time, <laughs> we can switch there on our journey on this uh, back to the future train. And you'll see this is the one year anniversary 
Also, we created stickers for the team, right? So that you can see here um, the different roles. They can put their name, right? We have a train ticket. Um, also, do you want to show your backpack, Phil? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> so it's, it's rare for us to have a client that we work with where literally everybody cancels anything they can so they can work with Ingenico. Um, it's just because of that sense of family. But uh, I received this in the mail. And this is something that they did. So it seems like every PI that they they do something to remind people they're part of the community. And I received yeah. this backpack, and it was really cool. It 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 has um, it came with a whole bunch of of these Velcro stickers with all the different roles you might see on an art or around that in the in the operational value stream. And so you know, I chose Agile Coach, SPC, Executive, and 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 everything. And it's just it was. This is the little things that that create that sense of community, and I just, you know, I, it it it's infectious, and it creates this sense of identity. You know, JC, you shared with me um, a really surprising metric about attrition rates. Is that yeah. something you 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 publicly can state or? Absolutely, we had about two percent attrition over the past three years. Mm -hmm. Think about Excluding that. Excluding retirement, because we, we have to let people retire sometime. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we only had one team member leaving us. I mean, we, we even have people who are subcontractors telling us, okay, well, I have to move, but get, I'm changing countries, I'm changing company. Can, can I still work with you? We have somebody who just moved to Germany who sent me a message saying, hey, uh, let's stay in touch because I want to keep being in touch with you, it's so much fun. And that's that's great. And the teams are really embracing it. I mean, I know it seems corny. Uh, I know it seems like we're playing with stuff. Well, I, I love my toys and things. I have Star Wars things. And uh, we pick the themes so people can not just grab the culture, but identify themselves to the team. So Although for the Jurassic train, nobody picked the team Barbasol. Uh, we have a team Jeep, <laughs> we have a team Amber, uh, and everybody's in the identifying. So when they are preparing their presentations, they are putting dinosaurs and they are putting animation. Uh, nobody's asking them to do it. It's just because it makes work more fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's interesting that the intentionality, uh, this isn't about giving, you know, going out and getting your corporate swag. This is about... I've watched as the stuff you send, it's very intentionally designed to create that sense of togetherness of a single community, you know, and, and, you know, your latest piece, right? Um, yeah, I just, it it's, yeah, check the, check the, go ahead, you got to demo this. Right. So it's called Ingenical, uh, in, uh, Park is the Ingenical Institute taken off the Jurassic train. And what you'll see, we actually created a planner for the team. You can see it here. Right, so it's called the Jurassic Planner. Um, and the team actually helped create this, but something very cool in here, um, we created a uh, the board off of Monopoly. So we created our own board game called Naropoly, right? So the teams can play it and you could see it here. And so um, the designers worked very hard and it's not only a game. So on here, it actually has every team uh, the cards are related to the PO and the Scrum Master. So it actually allows you to learn about Scrum, to learn about what the teams do, and then, of course, uh, take all your notes. So for us, it's 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 a really big, uh, big thing for us to support the team. And then one last point where you could see here. So you can just see even the actual money are story points. Right, and then you see your cards here where it describes this as Team Blue. And so you can purchase Agile, you can uh, purchase developers and QA members or an Agile team. So we really did some hard work with the team to actually help them understand that it's more than just a framework. It's, it's a way of life for all of us to work. I love what you said. It's, it's a way of life, right? It, it, it's This is, and JC said it earlier, right? It's not about safe, right? Safe's the vehicle that they've chosen to, to, to carry them on their journey, but it's not about safe. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I, 
I got to tell you, I'm, I'm honored and humbled to be able to work with people like you and, and see you on your journey. I, you know, for the audience out there, I've been waiting a long time to be able to have JC and Takesha share their story because it, it's, if you, if your enterprise could do just a little bit of this, but the intentionality around building the community is, is so powerful. Is there anything else you can kind of say around, around that, you know, what else did it take um, to, to try and create that community? Because I remember at the beginning, um, you know, like, like one thing you mentioned earlier, Takesha, um, this, this support for other languages and cultures. I recall, you know, we actually got somebody, um, even though they didn't have a Spanish leading safe class at the time, or a safer teams class, we found somebody who was a native Spanish speaker to work with um, the, Span the, the teams from Mexico so that they had somebody who could relate to them on a cultural level um, uh, during, during, the, during the art launch activities. What other things have you done along the way? Yeah. Yes, and just to piggyback on that, I think that's very important when the organization and your leadership supports you so that you can learn it in your uh, mother tongue, right? So we, we all understand differently. So definitely the teams know that we're actually backing them, uh, but also we set up communities of practice, right? Um, our scrum masters are key in that. Um, they're, they're for different topics. Um, and so we're, we're looking um, to them and they actually work with the teams and also just individual trainings for different teams. Um, so that um, they can improve their skill sets, JC. Yeah, so that's exactly it. I, I mean, you have to let everybody take ownership. Uh, don't meddle with it too much. Tell them, hey, these are tools. Just use them. Be free to use them. Uh, I, I'm very, very happy when team members stop coming to me. If they stop coming to me for questions or for advice or to make decisions, it means that they don't need me anymore and they can do their work. So my, my job is done. If, if you stop asking me, hey, do you think it's okay? Can you validate this? Uh, I shouldn't be the approver. The team knows. The, the team knows what needs to be done. Nobody needs to come to me for approval. Uh, instead, we use the reviews to show everyone this is what we've done and everybody can give their opinion. And we know that at the end, uh, our solutions team, product managers, our business people, our clients will have the final word and they will know better than us what actually needs to be done. Uh, and what really that did is it really brought the developers closer to the end customers. And, and that was the biggest change for us because then, the first comments we got was, oh, now we understand why we're doing what we're doing. And I, I think that that was the biggest revelation after the first PI for everybody. Oh, we are finally talking to each other. We're listening to each other. And that's all that was needed. The rest is just, yeah, because we want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> How about your your stakeholders? And, you know, kind of the, um, you know, we just, when we think about, you know, kind of the, maybe the art role, the roles on the art that, you know, the, the business owners and other stakeholders, what was this like for them? Was there a mind shift needed there? You know, uh, tell, tell us about that part of the journey and, and how do you, how did you bring them into the community? We cover there with bribes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, to be honest, that, that's the biggest challenge because now you have people who are used to receiving uh, products, software, deliveries in a certain certain manner, and it's changing. Uh, it's changing for them, it's changing for us, uh, and they need to adapt to it. So it, it took a lot of convincing. Um, as we all know, everything is a priority, everything is important. So when everything is important, nothing is important. Uh, and that was the key message we had to drive with them is we still have challenges with business value, actual business value and uh, representing it. It's, oh, well, everything is a 10. No, 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 well, assume everything is already a 10. Now you're going into the decimal points. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's really the discussion we're having. Uh, everything is important, we agree. But what, uh, what is bringing the most value? Uh, and when you start having these discussions, it takes time. And I know Takisha is working very closely with, so we call them the solutions team. Uh, they are the 
towards the other business. And ahead of PI planning, in between, we talk to them, what, three, four times a week now. We have regular <laughs> meetings and, and review with them. Uh, really planning around finding alignment, not just during these two or three days of PI planning, but all along the year, every day of the week. And that's a key element. So thank you, Charlotte. I mean, there, there's a lot of change involved there because I remember when you first started, it's like, I, I, I own Mexico and all you developers work for me, right? And I, whatever I want is what happens, right? I own Canada and whatever, you know, I can, I call the shots for development in Canada. I call the shots for development in the US. And I remember that was like a, you want us to what, right? But at the same time, I watched as the two of you brought them along and invited them into your journey. And, um, you know, one technique that I just want to call out here is that you gave them a place to have the hard conversations and share the raw feedback. I remember that from your planning event. And so when we when you set up your your when you set up your planning event in in Zoom, right? You had breakout rooms, kind of like little offices you could hop into to kind of you know talk somebody down off the top of the mountain, right? Or, or you know to, to 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 acknowledge that frustration and that and that questioning. And I think that was something that that I saw you do, and, and it was really cool to watch how many people used those extra breakout rooms because when we talk about simulate making making remote pi planning awesome how can you simulate the 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 planning event that happens face to face and those opportunities for side conversations are there uh, anything else any any other tips uh, you want to share with us on along I, those lines i think that's a good one uh we when we do the virtual events we create the number of rooms we need for the teams we have 13 teams uh, and then we create an additional 10 rooms uh for the scrum of scrum for the product owners to get together, for the product managers, the business owners to get together, and other breakout rooms, we just throw random names uh, according to our themes. And what that allows is when you're discussing in a team, just like you would in a physical world, and say, you know what, Phil, let's, I see you disagree with me, let's have a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, we just say in a chat, in the chat, let's let's go to the train station room and have a discussion on this because we don't want to start hearing our dirty laundry and start calling a, a, each other names in front of everyone. So we'll do it in private and we come back when we find alignment. And I think it's it's about providing the right space for people to find alignment. Mm -hmm. Also for space, just to add, giving that space is important, right? So when you're in the um, transformation, there's a lot of change happening, right? So the space is important because sometimes we need to go a certain direction, but we could do a detour. And a lot of times we, we do that. We compromise and we come back at it at a more convenient time because maybe at that point um, it becomes too much, right? So then our solution teams and, and our business partners, right? They understand within us that we're moving this for this way. Um, and so that when we come back, it's an easier message, right? Sometimes it's a hard message, right? But either way, we're working together to try to find that med uh, medium ground there because you do have to change. The transformation is continuous. It, it does not stop. I think that's a key point that we understand in our journey. Transformation doesn't stop. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's powerful. What what other you know if, if you have any other tips and tricks on um on on what makes remote PI planning awesome you have some thoughts around you know between the PI planning events what else do you do to strengthen the community you mentioned communities of practice with that mindset and collaboration it's hard to convey um you know having having been able to meet your people this is not a JC and, and Takesha thing this is a everybody thing right and I keep going back to that you know. 2% attrition, I have not heard of that at a, at a client or at a company I've worked at ever. And that's pretty powerful. And so um, any, any thoughts you have um, for any, you know, imagine someone's listening and they're an SPC early on their journey. They're an SPC, I know it all. I've, I've been an SPC for five years. I have nothing left to learn. Or, or hey, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about transforming or looking at this, this safe stuff. What advice do you have for me? So as we wait for a couple of questions to come in, um, just just share your insights, please. 
maybe one point. Um, it's a it's a train, and just like a train needs maintenance, it needs oil, it needs um, time to get an upgrade. The teams do too, right? And one thing in our organization is innovation. We do support the innovation iteration, right? Uh, I think that was one. Uh, JC, that was hard for some, right? That, yeah. hey, we're going to take out some time here and the teams are going to innovate, right? Um, from a business perspective, we do. We understand that we still need to push the projects, but this innovation is going to also help us tap into other customers, right, that we could bring into the business and provide that. So our teams were actually um, in those times innovating, um, and they actually brought out some pretty cool things that we're putting into market today. Yeah. There's a, there's a question. Music. Um, music. Hey, music. You need music when you're <laughs> doing your visual event. Yes. <laughs> you do. You need a DJ and yeah. you need a um, like a DevOps team that does Zoom and does, you need a team that that's there to help people because you can be divided. And so... And our last, um, I think PI5, sometimes I would be running around and one of our, I'm on my DevOps team, they said, no, that's too much. Let us handle it. And to my surprise, I no longer do any of those things anymore in the PI event. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you identify your support people, because I'm telling you, engineers are having a tough time with Miro, Zoom, and Jira for some reason. They, they can code the most complicated application and algorithms, but they cannot figure out how to vote on Miro. That's unbelievable. I've never seen that in my life. Um, real, uh, before we get, to, we've got a couple of questions in chat. I'm gonna go a little bit out of order. Is the first one you're talking about engineers, right? How did you teach engineers to develop vertically so they could deliver working software every iteration instead of horizontally or task-oriented development? Uh, and JC, you're a developer, so. That's, that's a big one. Uh, especially for us. So first of all, we we don't do cloud development. We're, we have a cloud organization, but it's not under our team. So we do what we call on-device or on-terminal. So we write the application for the payment terminal. So nothing works until it's loaded on the payment terminal. So it was the biggest challenge for us when we asked people, well, you need to start breaking down into smaller pieces of code and smaller chunks that you can present within a week or two weeks. And everybody was like, well, I can't, I need to finish the application. Actually, no, you don't. No, you don't. You, you can demonstrate and you can show what your code is doing. So initially it was a lot of, I'm going to show you my code and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, and we finally over the past, I would say six, seven months, moved away from showing code. So we're not showing codes in iteration reviews anymore. Uh, we're, showing, we're showing actual working software. What we had to do is reorganize how we do our code and how we manage uh, our main trunk and the branches. Uh, we are moving to the next stage now. We are creating a, a separate application and we called it Unicorn because nobody will ever use it. And it's going to become really a payment application playground. You just take your code, put it there, see if it's working or breaking something. If it's working great, you can merge it to the main uh, trunk of code. And if it's not working, well, it, don't do the pull request, don't merge your code and keep uh, improving and enhancing. The other element we had, we have a fantastic automation QA team that created a very, what we call the light automation tool or light testing tool. And you can just run a quick automation QA, uh, automated QA on your code uh, and see if it's going to uh, make or break. And then you can merge your code and demonstrate just a portion by downloading it on your terminal. Uh, we develop on Android terminals and proprietary OS. You can plug it into your laptop in a specific development mode, show the screen, share the screen with everybody. So that's, that's what we've done. But yes, changing the mindset of the developers it, it did not happen in a week or a month. I would say it took about a year. I remember seeing at one of, I think it was, I think we had the, we had, we were able to join your first INA. And I remember um, somebody actually having a, their webcam 
pointed at a terminal on their desk and watching the transaction happen. And that was just, so you can do demos even if you have physical stuff. Anything yes. you'd add to that, Takesha? Um, I just think for our teams, uh, for the development, um, as, as JC said, not only restructuring, um, but also within the teams, right? So most developers, um, they would prefer to, to work by themselves, right? Because they, they can concentrate. Um, but we foster a collaboration and for them to actually communicate more um, with each other. So they take those opportunity and we implemented peer programming. Um, so a lot of the teams were doing that and that really helped not only with communication, but also with junior and senior developers, right? Helping them to understand uh, the process to follow. Awesome. Um, so let's shift gears a little bit here. Our, the, we, last question we probably have time for, maybe we one, one more after this. Um, would you be willing to share challenges you faced helping facilitate the LPM and governance models for portfolios as an SPC? Now, the audience might know that, you know, Enabling SPCs and LPM are my two favorite topics. So I'm going to actually zip it and turn it over to JC and Takesha for this answer. I'm going to let Takesha answer. <laughs> so I, I think one, though, for the investment funding, uh, we're really tied to our financial team there, right? So aligning on with our transformation, um, there are many reports that we need to do. And what we found out that how we're working, we did have to make some changes so that it can al align with the investments and the strategies, what was expected, right? So we were able to adjust with that. Um, also with the lean governance, just the oversight of the spending, the audits, we, we go through a lot of that, right? Um, from the accounting, just, it takes a lot of energy, I must say, because I'm, I'm knee deep <laughs> in that right now. So we're finding out, but it helps us. Right, so at the end of it, working with the team, I can actually say with our transformation, I'm able to understand and help our, our full accounting teams in all three countries uh, come out with what's needed, or we take it back and uh, with JC and we make the necessary adjustments on our team. So as an SPC, you, you will find yourself in those arenas, plus with the project manager team. Um, so the project management team, is, um, we found to support us right in the framework, uh, we need a space for them, right? And it can be hard for project managers. Um, uh, but with Tom and his team, um, they're geared up helping us. They have a lot of communications with our global team. Um, so with the Lean Portfolio Management, we're able to assist all of these teams just by implementing Lean Portfolio. How far down are you on your LPM journey? Is it still in the early stages or are you out there doing participatory budgeting? Uh, I think we're almost halfway there. And I'm saying halfway because what is the biggest challenge with portfolio management, we're just realizing now, is getting the business people to start thinking not tomorrow, but six months, 12 months, 18 months from now. As much as everybody loves a roadmap, you have day-to-day -day customers with day-to-day -day needs and they want answers now. Uh, so it's really finding the right balance for this split mindset where I want to satisfy my today's demand. At the same time, I need to start planning and building for the future. Otherwise, the rat race never stops. Excellent. Well, looks like we've got most of our questions done. So I'll just ask each of you, right? So, um, what parting advice do you have to, to you know, cautionary tale or it's inspirational, you know, um, thoughts for for SPCs out there or companies that are that are relying on those those um, those individuals to help them with their their change journey? So maybe um, if it, if it's a quality that um, you would want to possess, I, I would say empathy. Um, it, it's, high on, it's, it's high on the train, right? As you're working, um, supporting different ones, um, sometimes we know the direction we want to go. Um, but if everyone is at different points, part of an SPC is not to torpedo the train 
to the to the stop right there there is a team on the train and you have to bring them along with you um right so you're that support so um i i would say if you're looking at the trains just imagine you're the track right and you're you're handling precious cargo on there so you want to make sure everyone gets there um so if if you can pick something i, I would say empathy would be something you want to display there that is such an amazing answer that demonstrates who you are, Takesha. And I, I, I love, you know, the SPC is the tracks and it's a precious cargo. I, I might I might quote you on that. Is that if I have your permission? Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> How about you, JC? What what are your parting thoughts for our for our audience? Well, I would say it really depends on your personalities, but really learn, learn to say nothing. Just listen. Because you know what? We all have very strong opinions. Uh, I know I have strong opinions and most of the time I force myself to just say nothing and wait because I don't have all the answers. Nobody does. Uh, and my only point I can anchor to is I know we've changed. I know we will change again and change never ends. I have a fantastic t-shirt I wore a few times, which says, uh, it's actually from Cirque du Soleil. I got it at the Cirque du Soleil show. Change is not change. Change is a constant. That's that's what it is. And it's if you think you've arrived, you haven't. You you're completely mistaken. So the journey never ends. It's funny. You can apply that to your transformation and to the SPC journey. Yes, it will keep on changing. Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much for joining us today. And thank you, audience, for, for listening in. Go ahead, JC, please. I have to say one last thing. We're doing something really fun and interesting right now. Okay. We're working, and I want to thank, thank Takisha and our team members working with them. We're onboarding a third continent, and it's going to be our biggest challenge so far. We're onboarding on our train a team out of Vietnam, which means they are 12 hours away. So we don't have a single hour of overlap. And uh, so far, they've been doing very great. Uh, they took on the stories and epics we sent them. They broke them down in over 200 little modules and snippets of codes. And they are very excited and eager to participate and be on board with us. So that's, that's the next chapter. Can awesome. You completely off hours, opposite hours train. That, that's that maybe we'll have maybe we'll have you back with some of the with some of those other team members in the future thank you both so much and everybody have a have a wonderful rest of your day thank you very thank much thank you bye